Paul wrote these words, do not be anxious about anything. And reading this, these words, I, I just want to say to Paul, so what planet are you from anyway? What planet? For we've this unharnessed virus that's hanging over us like a low-lying dark cloud. And every time we think about entering a, an enclosed space, we feel like we're taking our life in our own hands. We are continuously wearing masks. We are warning people to stay away from us. We are in this holding pattern in Michigan, phase four. States are suing governors and state governors are suing the federal government. Politics have just gotten mean. Protests and rioting and, and racist groups are on the rise. And they say that of all the businesses that have, that have closed, perhaps 40% of them will never return. So 40 million, of, million people are out of a job and counting. Unemployment is, is running out of, or people are running out of unemployment checks. Will kids go back to school? Is it safe? And I'm not sure what happened to those murder hornets, but, but they're out there somewhere. Paul sounds so dismissive to me. Do not be anxious about anything, he said. Well, that was then. This is now. It is, it is said that the Bible speaks to every generation but Paul's words appear so irrelevant, so out of touch, until I read these, <clears throat> these words from commentary. It reads, Paul and the believers in Philippi had ample reason for anxiety and worry, since Paul was in prison facing probable execution. And the Philippians were threatened with rising tensions of persecution because of their faith. I realize now that Paul was not making light of the circumstances, situations, and difficulties the Philippians were facing. He was not being flippant nor dismissive. And, and Paul would not make light of the collective and personal problems that you and I are facing either. For commentary says, Paul confidently writes from a prison cell to the Philippian church. He writes, do not be anxious about anything. Because Paul knows that God is greater than all of their troubles combined. That God is greater still, period. The anatomy of, <clears throat> of worry looks something like this. You and I worry because we try to control the uncontrollable. We worry, uh, we, we worry to problem solve something that either really isn't a problem or isn't a problem that's solvable. Worry happens because we often try to control every aspect of our day, and then some. And it is to this that Paul would say, stop worrying. Stop the anxious, harassing care. Stop attempting to carry the burden of the future. Stop the unreasonable anxiety. For God is greater than your problems. He's greater than your troubles. You know, my father and I, from time to time when I was growing up, would spend the day <clears throat> on Houghton Lake fishing. The boat was tied to the top of our car, and it was, it was simply a matter of lifting the boat off the car and setting it down. <clears throat> Afterwards, it was a matter of lifting the boat back onto the car. Well, I was a squirrely junior high kid who lacked upper body strength. And following a day of fishing, I was unable to lift that boat high enough to set it back on the car top carriers. And let me just say, my father was not a patient man. Following several tries and fails, a man came by. Can I be of help? Problem solved. How much more, God? How much more? 26 years ago, we began building our cottage. We built this cottage on a shoestring with, with the help of family and friends. I had made a commitment to see this project through. I would travel four hours on Thursday night, and I would come home Saturday evening for church on Sunday. It took two years to complete. And I remember one weekend just feeling tired, stressed, and anxiety-stricken. And I was thinking, could I complete this thing? Well, Ralph and Gerald two old farmers 
who were there with me that week and must have sensed my angst and, and dread. And Gerald said, Marty, just look around you. We are here for you. And it will be okay. Would God do less? Would God do less? From commentary come these words, and they make sense. How does one gain and keep her equilibrium in a world heaving with anxiety-creating situations? It sounds like today. How do you keep your equilibrium? Paul's answer is prayer. What is the alternative to worry and anxiety? Paul would say unequivocally, prayer. For from personal experience, Paul had learned that the way to be anxious about nothing was to pray about everything. That through prayer and petition and requests, Paul encouraged the Philippian believers to find release from anxiety and worry. Prayer is, is a conversation with. It is a plea directed to. It is a request made to the supreme person of the universe who hears us knows us, understands us, and cares about us, and responds to us with our best in mind. For you and I to be anxious means that we seek to control what often is uncontrollable. To pray to God is to make room for Him, is to cast our care on Him, letting our cares be His care. And as a result, the peace of God will ensue that when we pray, we receive the peace which God himself has. When we pray, God's calm serenity becomes our serenity. You know, a virus will be with us for some time. We will continue wearing masks. We will continue asking people to stay away. And the news is not going to change much. The political unrest business closures, protests, and riots, and murder hornets. In all of this, let's decide to do something healthy in these tumultuous times that we are living. Let's make a decision. Let's make that decision right now to pray, now and in the future. Pray about everything, and we will worry about nothing. May we pray. Would you pray with me? Our God, we seek your peace and serenity now and into the future. You know, these will certainly elude us if we do business as usual, if we fret and worry. But if we just start our day with the words, Dear God, if we talk with you, thanking you and, and laying the worries of this world that encumber us at your feet, if we'd open our hands as a sign of letting go and letting God, your peace and serenity would come in time. And so, we will pray and we will start today. Amen.